And welcome everyone to the first PacBio Bioinformatics webinar of 2021. We really appreciate your time and attention today. And personally, I'm really excited to tell you the story of HiFi sequencing, this incredible technology that is transforming the field of genomics. Before we get started, I want to briefly mention my colleagues on the global BFX FAS team. We're a group of trained scientists with expertise in the analysis of long read sequencing data. Our responsibilities involve training and supporting customers, assisting in the interpretation of sequencing results, and consulting with customers on experimental designs. If you have any data analysis questions, we'd love to hear from you. And if this sounds like a job you'd enjoy, we are in fact hiring a team member in Europe and you can apply online. Today, we'll begin by briefly talking about how our sequencing technology works, then cover our legacy data model of continuous long reads, and finally, talk all about HiFi sequencing. We'll close out with some time for question and answer. So let's get started. Our technology is called single molecule real-time sequencing. With our platform, you put in long molecules of DNA and you get out highly accurate long reads of those molecules with the ability to sequence complex regions and directly detect DNA based modifications. It has a broad range of applications from whole genome sequencing to amplicon sequencing to metagenomics and more. With smart sequencing, you can get millions of highly accurate long reads at single molecule resolution, covering even the most complex regions of the genome or transcriptome. To use our platform, you begin by isolating DNA from your samples, following our Smart Bell library preparation protocol, and then loading your libraries into one of our systems, along with a set of consumable smart cells and associated reagents. The whole process of library preparation typically takes about one to three days, depending on which protocol you're following and the number of samples you have. Once you've loaded everything onto the system, automated liquid handling robotics take over and initiate the sequencing reactions on the smart cells, which for reference are small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Much like computer microchips, we use nanofabrication techniques to manufacture our smart cells which contain millions of nanoscopic wells, roughly 100 nanometers in diameter, called zero-mode waveguides, or ZMWs. Each ZMW is loaded with a single smart bell DNA template that is bound to a polymerase enzyme, which gets anchored at the bottom of the ZMW. The ZMWs are then illuminated from below with a laser that is capable of exciting fluorescent labels covalently linked to the nucleotide triphosphates, which are the substrates of the polymerase as it replicates the template. Critically, because the wavelength of the laser is longer than the diameter of the ZMW, the light is unable to pass through the ZMW and can only illuminate the very bottom as shown by the red region in the lower left image. Thus, only the fluorescent label of the nucleotide being incorporated by the polymerase can be excited and then emit fluorescence, which we can detect. Essentially, we use the laser to repeatedly image the polymerase as it replicates the template, recording the incorporated bases as a string of fluorescent pulses. In other words, we take a movie of the polymerase replication process to determine the sequence of bases in the template. Each smart bell starts off as a double-stranded DNA molecule with our proprietary hairpin adapters ligated to both ends, creating a topologically circular molecule. The polymerase enzyme binds to one of the adapters and begins to unzip the template strands upon initiation of the sequencing reaction by the robotic system. As long as the polymerase sticks to the DNA template and replicates it, we can detect the incorporation of bases. If the polymerase makes it all the way around the template and back to the point of origin, it will begin to displace the DNA strand that it synthesized. In this state, the polymerase is highly stable and very processive. 
and it will continue to go around the template multiple times until the end of the movie, giving very long reads. However, polymerase instability during the first and second strand passes can lead to loss of signal, resulting in a shorter read. The sequence of bases detected during replication of the template is called a polymerase read. When we remove the adapter sequences, we're left with a set of subreads derived from the polymerase read representing the sequence of each template strand. Subreads are noisy, typically about 90% accurate, with random errors interspersed throughout the sequences. But since these errors are random, we can use multiple subreads to call a circular consensus sequence for the template. When the predicted CCS read quality is at least Q20, or 99% accurate, we call it a hi-fi read. Smart sequencing is the only technology that can take multiple independent measurements of the same exact template and call a highly accurate single molecule consensus. To put these terms in a bit better context, let's go through the different stages of data processing. Primary analysis refers to the real-time detection of fluorescent pulses that gets translated into a polymerase read. Post-primary analysis deals with polymerase read processing to yield the subreads. Both primary and post-primary analysis are carried out on our SQL, SQL2, and SQL2e systems, concluding with the data transfer to your storage servers. Secondary analysis refers to PacBio developed software tools for processing the subreads and CCS reads, which we mainly distribute through our freely available SmartLink software suite. You can download SmartLink from our website and install it on a desktop Linux server or a virtual machine. While SmartLink is required to connect with your PacBio system, enabling instrument operation, it can also optionally connect with an external HPC system, enabling execution of our secondary analysis workflows, either through a browser-based graphical user interface or command line tools. While CCS calling has historically been a part of our secondary analysis software, we did recently introduce CCS on instrument with the SQL 2e system, but we'll talk about that in more detail shortly. Finally, tertiary analysis refers to the many third-party software tools for downstream data processing, some of which we'll also touch on a little bit later in the presentation. To help solidify these concepts, I've got four example ZMWs to consider. Here, ZMW1 had an insert size of 10 kb and only yielded one full pass subread, meaning the polymerase read was also just 10 kb in this case. Since the DNA insert was 10 kb in length, the unique molecular yield for ZMW1 is 10 kb. For ZMW2, the DNA insert is 7.5 kb in length, so its UMY is 7.5 kb even though it yielded two full pass subreads for a polymerase read length of 15 kb. While ZMWs 1 and 2 in this example were not able to yield CCS reads, ZMWs 3 and 4 each did yield a CCS read. But since the predicted CCS read quality for ZMW 3 is only 19, that falls below our cutoff of 20 and so does not qualify as a hi-fi read whereas ZMW4 had a predicted CCS read quality of 25, meeting the criteria to be called a hi-fi read. To calculate coverage, given an example genome size of 10 kb, we add across all four ZMWs and then divide by the genome size. This gives us a total subread coverage of 6.5x, unique molecular coverage of 2.75x, CCS coverage of 1x, and hi-fi coverage of 0.5x. Overall, data flow is managed in conjunction by the instrument control software that operates on our systems and the SmartLink software that operates on your Linux server, all in accordance with your custom settings. Since the launch of our SQL system in 2015, this data flow has focused primarily on subreads, which takes us into our next topic for the day, Continuous long reads. 
These are essentially the subreads that we extract from the polymerase reads. For the SQL and SQL2 systems, our data model has been to practically preserve the polymerase reads for all ZMWs by partitioning them into scraps and subreads, both of which are written to disk in unaligned BAM files that comply with the standard SAM specification but lack a cigar string. The subreads were the starting point for all secondary analysis pipelines, and the scraps were really hardly ever used except in rare cases of troubleshooting. While this data model did preserve all the bases detected during primary analysis, these files were hundreds of gigabytes in size, requiring huge amounts of data storage capacity and compute resources for downstream analysis. But before we talk about our latest data model innovations, let's dig a little bit deeper into the subreads BAM file. Here's a single subread record from a BAM file produced by one of our SQL2 systems. In the SAM flagged section of the record, you can see there's no cigar string, indicating that the data are unaligned. You can also see that we use a number of custom tags to store information specific to our data type. Most important are the interpulse duration and the pulse width tags, shown in blue and orange, respectively. These two tags contain the kinetic information that is critical to our CCS calling algorithm. There's also the tags for context flag and position start and end. For subreads, the tag for the number of passes and read quality are really not important, nor is the base quality field. This is because there's really no meaningful quality information about subreads or subread bases. The exclamation character, which occupies the base quality field for all of the subread bases, indicates a FRED quality score of zero. So it's essentially a placeholder just to conform with the SAM specification. Similarly, the read quality tag is by default set to 0.8 for all subreads, really just another placeholder. There is meaningful information, however, in the subread name, which indicates the movie name, the ZMW of origin, and the start and end coordinates of the subread within the original polymerase read. As well, the context flag stores some useful information about the presence or absence of adapters on either end of the subread, similar to how a SAM flag stores information about an alignment. Coming back to the kinetic information, there are a few important things to note. Each tag consists of comma-separated integers that indicate the number of frames for the corresponding base in the nucleotide sequence. Each base has both an interpulse duration and pulse width measurement associated with it. We record up to 952 frames per base for both tags, which translates, which translates to 9.52 seconds of real time, given our image capture rate of 100 frames per second. Furthermore, these raw frames are compressed to a maximum value of 255 using a special encoding to save some space. For the full details about this encoding, you should consult our BAM specification online. These are some nitty gritty details, but if you're interested in epigenetics analyses, it's really important because the kinetic information is where the base modification signals are imprinted. And that's pretty much all there is to say about subreads. This is where the story begins for hi-fi reads. Over the last 10 years, you really only had two choices for sequencing DNA, accurate short reads or noisy long reads. Even though long reads were noisy, we found they could still be pretty useful, especially for de novo genome assembly, when you're given enough coverage. But everything changed when we realized that long reads could also be highly accurate with just a few tweaks to our technology. Now these highly accurate long reads are proving to be more useful than ever before, and they are transforming applications across the spectrum, truly marking the dawn of a new era, the hi-fi sequencing era. With the release of our SQL 2 e system in SmartLink 10.0 last October, we've put the focus of our future squarely on hi-fi reads, introducing the capability to perform CCS analysis on instrument and changing the data we save to storage with our brand new reads.bam format, which we'll review in detail shortly. 
Not only do these changes save large amounts of disk space, but they also reduce the downstream analysis time because hi-fi reads are so much more accurate and easier to work with. Furthermore, we've found that the downstream analysis results are really all around better with hi-fi reads as the input instead of subreads. For example, de novo genome assemblies made from hi-fi reads have broken records for contiguity, pushing completeness and quality to new levels. With respect to the reduced compute needs for data produced by the SQL 2E system, you can see here that it requires fewer total cores to support secondary analysis. As well, we are recommending about half the amount of data storage capacity as was required for subreads. However, the SmartLink server specification has not changed, nor has our network speedness specification. Network speed is especially important when you're considering cloud-based storage and analysis capabilities, for which we're also offering more support moving forward. With cloud services, you won't have to worry about building up and maintaining on-site on infrastructure, and you'll be able to scale more quickly and cost-effectively. These improvements to computational efficiency are possible because of the single molecule nature of our ZMW technology, combined with the topologically circular Smart Bell templates. The key is our ability to read the template multiple times and construct a highly accurate single molecule consensus sequence, which no other technology can do. By improving our library preparation protocols, and optimizing the DNA insert size to target a narrow range up to 20 kb with physical shearing and size selection during the library preparation, we can produce millions of polymerase reads that make many passes over the template, ultimately yielding hi-fi reads. We've proven this model, and in the data shown here, you can see not only how the increasing number of passes improves predicted read quality, but also how the predicted read quality agrees well with the empirical mapped concordance. For an example, here are some CCS analysis results for a 20 KB Hi-Fi library of human genomic DNA sequenced on a SQL 2E system. You can see that we recovered 1.7 million Hi-Fi reads for a total yield of 32.8 gigabases, or about 10x coverage over the human genome. The average read length was 18.5 KB, and the median read quality was Q30, or 99.9% .9 predicted accuracy, with an average of nine full pass subreads per hi fi read. Additionally, there were 353,000 CCS reads below the Q20 read quality threshold for hi fi reads. The hex bin plot on the right shows the concentration of reads according to their length and accuracy. Looking at the read length distribution, you can see that even though we physically shear the DNA to approximately 20 kb fragments and then size select them during the library preparation, the process isn't perfect, and we recover a range of read lengths. That said, the highest concentration of reads is clearly around our target of 20 kb, indicating a high-quality, high-fi library. As for actually generating the hi-fi reads via CCS calling, it's a relatively easy process, even if you're doing it manually. Of course, the SQL 2E system can handle this automatically using the parameters shown here, but you can also run CCS yourself via command line or using the SmartLink GUI. If you're interested in epigenetics analyses, note that it is possible to propagate the kinetic information with the hi-fi reads although it will make the BAM files about four to five times larger than without the kinetics. As well, there are a number of other parameters that you can tweak in CCS, for example, to raise the accuracy cutoff or the minimum number of passes, add some size filters, or run it in bi-strand mode, which calculates a separate consensus for each strand of the template using the respective subreads. However, bi-strand mode is not currently possible with on-instrument CCS analysis. So if you want to run it that way, you have to disable on-instrument CCS so that the system stores the subreads in accordance with the data model that we discussed earlier, which you can then process with your custom settings. When you're running CCS on-instrument, the dash-dash-all mode that we use 
with or without kinetics, outputs one read per ZMW. This effectively preserves all the unique molecular information of the subreads while eliminating the molecular redundancy and giving easy access to the hi fi reads. But the key point here is that the reads.bam file contains more than just hi fi reads, including lower quality CCS reads and other reads. So if you only want to work with the hi fi reads, you can use the file that is automatically generated by SmartLink when the data is imported after transfer to storage, or you can manually filter the reads.bam file using our command line tools. I'll cover both options for filtering in more detail momentarily, but first let's keep focused on the file structure. The data that gets written to disk by the SQL2 E system looks like this when you're using on instrument CCS analysis. Here you can see the reads.bam file, the metadata about the sample information, and some raw data statistics, and accompanying log files. In terms of the file size, you can expect the reads.bam without kinetics information to be anywhere from about 20 to 100 gigabytes, depending on the insert size and the number of reads. But again, adding the kinetics information will increase the file size about four to five times. Since the BAM files can be rather large, even without the kinetics information, we use these lightweight XML files to contain the key metadata and pointers to the BAM files. When we include the kinetics information in the BAM file, it is stored in four custom tags, FI, FP, RI, and RP. Similar to the IP and PW tags that we reviewed earlier in the subreads.bam file, these tags contain comma-separated integers representing the number of frames measured for each base, except that the values here are the average of each interpulse duration and pulse width measurement for each base in the forward and reverse strands across all of the subreads that were part of the CCS. Note that for the reverse strand, we are implicitly assuming that it is a perfect reverse complement of the forward strand, so we only store the forward strand sequence. Looking at this single record from the reads.bam file, you can see how much space these four kinetics tags take up and why the file size increases so much when we include them. But again, if you're not interested in epigenetics analyses, you really don't need these tags, and you can pretty safely exclude them. When we leave out the kinetics tags, you can see much more clearly the information stored for this example hi fi read. Most importantly, the base sequence and the base quality fields, shown in yellow and green. But I'd also like to highlight the NP and RQ tags, which store the number of full pass subreads and the predicted read quality, respectively. The RQ value is a floating point number between 0 and 1 emitted by our proprietary consensus algorithm called ARO, which is fundamentally a hidden Markov model and is at the core of the CCS calling tool. This fractional RQ value is easily converted to the predicted percent accuracy, just multiply by 100%. So in this example, the read has a predicted percent accuracy of 99.9999% or a FRED quality score of 60. We're able to achieve such a high accuracy because, as you can tell from the NP tag, there were 27 subreads used to calculate the consensus and obtain this hi fi read. But what about those base quality scores? Again, we are using a FRED quality score encoding which employs ASCII characters to represent numerical values in accordance with the industry standard FASTQ format. The major difference between our base quality scores and those produced by other systems is that we use the full range of available values from zero to 93. If you want to take a closer look at which characters correspond to which values, we did put this information on the Wikipedia page for the FASTQ format. As a reminder, uh, FRED quality scores are log scale values that simultaneously represent both the probability of an incorrect base call and the predicted base call accuracy. Again, this information is also available on Wikipedia. 
uh, but I had to extend the table a little bit to include the upper limits of our base quality scores. Suffice it to say that with HiFi reads, we can produce the most highly accurate base calls of any DNA sequencing technology available today. But it's really important to remember that the reads.bam file produced by the SQL 2E system contains more than just the HiFi reads. If you're using SmartLink for data analysis, read filtering is built into our analysis pipelines to use only the HiFi reads by default, except in the case of our ISOSeq analysis pipeline, which uses a lower quality cutoff to obtain some greater sensitivity. If you're doing a, uh, your data analysis outside of SmartLink, you've got to remember to filter the reads.bam file for just those HiFi reads. To find the reads.bam file on your data storage server, if you don't already know the path, you can consult the data management view of your data set in SmartLink, shown here. As you can see, there are some other useful tabs as well in the data management view, including the CCS analysis report, the raw data report, and some others. SmartLink renders numerous plots and tables containing various metrics about your data, and you can easily produce some PDF reports to share with your colleagues. If you just want the HiFi reads from the SmartLink job that automatically extracted them from the reads.bam file, you can see the job in our Smart Analysis view, shown here. Of course, all this data is accessible on the server as well via the path listed in the Analysis Overview tab for your given job. You can follow that path and access the files in the Outputs directory of the job on your server, moving or manipulating them on the command line or you can download the files from the server through your browser using the SmartLink GUI. Although these files can be pretty large and that might take a long time, mainly depending on your network speed. While you can download SmartLink for free from our website, if you don't have it set up on a server or if you just prefer a more lightweight solution, we also distribute many of our core tools via Bioconda. You can find pretty comprehensive information about this on our PD Bioconda GitHub page, as well as submit bug reports and questions via the issues on this repo. For filtering your data, we have a command line tool called Dataset, with the first two commands shown here demonstrating the relevant syntax. You can see that the input for the filter command is the consensus readset.xml file produced by the SQL 2E system which again is just a lightweight wrapper around the reads.bam file. The dataset tool also has some other useful functions, such as summarize, which will tell you some useful information about the XML file. Another one of our tools that I wanted to highlight is bam sieve, with the syntax here shown to select a thousand random reads from the file hi-fi-reads.bam and store them in a file called sample.bam. Of course, there are many other useful third-party tools available on GitHub, such as BAM tools, with the syntax shown here to effectively achieve the same exact filtering that you can do with our dataset tool. We also have some tools for demultiplexing barcodes from a library of pooled samples, assembling de novo genomes, and mapping reads to a reference genome, among others. You can see how simple the syntax is to execute these operations. And with HiFi reads, these programs are really fast and resource efficient. If you're working with bacterial genomes, for example, you can easily run all of these commands in just a few hours on a desktop Linux system. For more documentation on each of these commands, uh, visit our PD Bioconda repo and you'll be able to find some links to uh, the repos for each respective tool. To show just a little bit of this information, I've got some key pieces of documentation from our PBMM2 GitHub repo. PBMM2 is really just a wrapper around Minimap2, but we have some special settings, such as no secondary alignments are produced by PBMM2, and it uses soft clipping uh, with the dash Y parameter, parameter of Minimap2. Additionally, PBMM2 outputs some more custom tags, shown here, to indicate the alignment match identity according to one of several methods that we have available for calculating this kind of metric. 
We also have a special function in PDMM2 called repeated matches trimming, which is necessary to meet the most important principle of PDMM2, which is that each base in a read only gets aligned once. For more details on that, be sure to check out the repo and feel free to ask any questions at the end of the presentation. Our demultiplexing tool called Lima is another one that I just wanted to briefly highlight. Lima also uses several custom tags to store information about the barcodes detected in each read, principally the BC and BQ tags, which contain the barcode calls and scores respectively. Typically, there are two barcodes on a smart bell template, which we call the leading and the trailing barcodes. These can be the same barcode or different barcodes, which we call symmetric barcodes or asymmetric barcodes, respectively. Lima clips the barcodes from the ends of the read and stores them using the tags shown in the table on the right. Normally, we really don't use these tags very much after demultiplexing. But if you're having any problems with your barcodes, it's really valuable to have the clip sequences available in these tabs. Of course, we have many other tools, as I mentioned. Here's just a few more that I wanted to briefly highlight. COSA is our repo dedicated to SARS-CoV-2 analysis tools. PB Mark Dupe is our tool for marking PCR duplicates in libraries that were PCR amplified prior to sequencing. PVAA is our tool for clustering and phasing amplicons. ISOSeq is our tool for analyzing transcriptome data. PBSV is our tool for calling structural variants. PB Rugged Workflow and PB Metagenomics tools are really more pipelines than individual tools. The latter is somewhat self explanatory, but PB Rugged stands for Rare and Undiagnosed Genetic Disease. This pipeline is really focused on human genomes and it involves uh, de novo assembly, variant calling, and phasing. Finally, I've also highlighted just a few user developed analysis tools, which I think are particularly useful. Hi Fi ASM is an incredible de novo assembly tool built specifically for Hi Fi reads. Bandage isn't really specific for Hi Fi reads, but it is a great tool for visually inspecting genome assembly graphs. Similarly, QOST is a general tool, but again, really useful for quickly computing de novo assembly statistics. Deep Variant is a tool for calling single nucleotide variants and small indels, and has really quickly become the gold standard for variant calling. WhatsApp is a tool for phasing heterozygous variants in diploid and polyploid genomes. And finally, Sconti 3 is a tool for downstream processing of our isoseq data and is really useful for characterizing splice variants and identifying novel isoforms. One more third-party tool that I also just want to briefly discuss is IGV. Most of you probably already know about IGV, but if you don't, it is an incredibly powerful visualization tool. Here I'm showing a view of IGV zoomed in on an 807 KB region of human chromosome 19. The mapped HIFI reads shown here were phased with what's HAP and are grouped and colored by haplotype. The phase block track shows that this phase block extends out beyond the boundaries of our view, and you can see all of the genes annotated in this region, meaning all of these genes are haplotype resolved. While we're looking at a pretty large view here, you can also zoom in down to the nucleotide resolution and see the sequence itself. There's really a lot you can do with IGV. So if you haven't worked with it yet, I highly recommend you check it out. If you haven't had a chance to get your hands on some HiFi data yet, we do have some publicly available data sets on our website that you can access and explore for free. We have several data sets for de novo genome assembly, a couple for whole transcriptome analysis, and a few more specialized applications. If you have any suggestions for example data, set, data sets that we should add, uh, don't be afraid to let us know. And with that, I'd like to bring this presentation to a close. Thank you all again for your time and attention today.
We're really excited here at PacBio to see what you can do with HiFi reads and the power of single molecule sequencing. From human biomedical applications to agricultural improvements to good old basic science, we see a world of opportunity and we're here to work with you along the way.